Hey guys, welcome back. We're taking a look at an Intermountain product today, and it's the F7A and F7B units. Each of these MSRP for $249.95, but you can get discounts out there available. So if you want an A and B unit together, you're looking at almost $500 MSRP, but again, with the discounts out there, you're going to be able to find good discounts at brick and mortar hobby shops and online retailers of your choosing. We're just going to take a look at the Union Pacific scheme and the Kansas City Southern scheme today, and I'll give you my thoughts on these locomotives. They're equipped with ESU Loc Sound Select decoders, so I already know the sound is going to be great from ESU, but let's actually make sure we test that out along with many other tests starting now. going to go and unbox the A unit here. Both the A and B unit will be similar so we won't unbox each in, on camera. Probably the exact same. You've got styrofoam with plastic wrap and a hard plastic shell and some accessory parts in here to install at your leisure. A little bit of styrofoam on the model, get out of the way here. And you've also got in the box an operator's guide. Very simple and to the point. Front there, if you want to read in detail, you can pause below up to 1080 PhD, which I think you should do anyway to see these models. And all the information about the horn and whistle shell removal instructions which is really nice because some manufacturers don't tell you how to remove the shell and how to maintain your locomotive. Let's take a closer look at this in the B unit next. Still haven't found my pointer so we're gonna fat finger this quite literally and go over some actual detail on the front. You've got marker lights, class lights actually, you've got number boards, you have a grab iron on each side of the nose door, the nose door itself detail metal coupler, you've got the snow plow, you have an LED headlight, and you've got the windshield windshields here with the windshield wipers and the accessory bag for installation. You've got a horn mounted on the roof. You've got separately applied grab irons there. As you guys know, I don't install details. I show it how it is out of the box because some people don't install details, but you've got grab irons on the back as well to uh, have crew access to the doors. Nice etched metal grill here that runs the length of the locomotive. There have usually been problems in the past with other manufacturers having warpage in those metal grills. This one is straight as an arrow and it's not popping out um, due to the expansion and contraction of the metal. Nice truck detail, fuel tank detail, emergency shutoff button on the fuel tank. You've got the cab number there, Kansas City Southern, nice, real vibrant colors. Back you've got the door, rear door, with a actual handle or grab iron and door detail around the area there. Little ribbed detail there in the mold or shell. Lift rings on the top that are really nice and fine. They aren't oversized or bulky. Taking a look at the top, kind of a top view down. You got the four fans here. You got the exhaust and a smooth top otherwise with some rivet detail running along in patterns. Just very, very faint but nice rivet detail um, accurate for what you see on the F7 unit. All right, the B unit, more of the same. Uh, some of the things I didn't point out on the A unit are the nice crew access ladders at the bottom. The truck detail is nice. Again, grab irons along the side. No warpage on this metal either. Metal grill going all along the side of the whole body. So they, whatever the process they're using, they really nailed it. And some manufacturers can really mess that up. Again, more lift ring detail, nicely done. There aren't broken lift rings or anything, so they're durable enough to survive transit, um, but small enough not to be oversized. 
and more roof detail on this B unit as well. Uh, another difference in obviously the B unit is not going to be the A unit. There's no cab, etc. But you've got the windows here, three on each side. So really nice um, A and B unit together. And there's still a KCS F units running, I believe. Uh, not necessarily this number, but uh, something that you can either do present day or as a modeler for that area. All right, we have A and B unit together. I know that's gonna kind of double the sound, double the pleasure, double the fun, but um, we cannot, uh, I don't think it would be right just to run one. I think this is the way it's intended to run, really. So we're gonna go over the functions based on the actual operator's guide that was given by Intermountain in the box to each customer. We're going to go off those functions. Excuse me as I shut some functions off that are already on address 3 though, so you may hear some sounds here. So the first thing, uh, since we had to shut off some things anyway, is uh, turn the sound back on with F8, which is mute. We're going to go one bell. Very, very crisp, nice bell. Not a lot of resonance or uh, rattling or anything like that. Two, horn. Sounds awesome individually, but also together it sounds even better. It has kind of a stereo effect. Three is short horn. Four is dynamic brake. Five turns on your classification lights and number boards, which you can see there. All kind of one number, or one uh, light there. F6 is not applicable here. F7 is the dimmer for the headlight. You probably see that in your left hand screen. F8, like I said, meets the locomotive. F9 is RPMs up. Or radiator fans. F10 is RPMs down or air compressor. F11's brake squeal. F12 is coupler. Alright, gonna take it off from me here. I accidentally moved it, so let's take a look at slow speed steps since we have this going right now. I'm gonna mute this so you can hear if there's motor noise or not, and we will move this whole A, B unit one speed step. There's one. And I know some people may dispute whether it should be coupled up or not, but I think it's good. It'll be able to tell if there's speed matched out of the box. Uh, one speed step, we've got a little bit of alerts, but we're moving on pretty well here. Two. Three. Everything appears to be smoothed out. You may notice something I'm not. Four. And five. All right, definitely smoothed out. We're gonna go in reverse here. One speed step. Two. Three. As I said in forward, all seems super. We're gonna wheel off there. Three. 
four, and five. Just to be fair to the manufacturer, because I noticed a wheel off. I don't know if that happened as a derail or if it was just not on there to begin with. We'll check one more time at one here. Make sure there wasn't. Yeah, it's still a tiny bit of lurch, but looks like smoothed out by two. And again, this is out of the box, no break-in runs, and no start voltage changes through the CV. So two is the final verdict for smooth operation. There may have been you know, a difference between two and three because that one wheel was off. So that does it for operation of the motor and sound. All right, so we have the pull test hooked up here. We're going to go forward with both units first. Got 5 .9, 6.1, 6.3, 6.5. 6.5 ounces, oop, even still going here. 6.7 ounces of pull for both units. That is outstanding for an F unit pair because you're probably at uh, three, three and a half ounces per unit, which I'll just double check. Should be simple multiplication, but sometimes it is not just simple multiplication by two. And the sound is back on here. So I put this back off, took it off the track for a half a second here. Now let me tear this out at zero. We're checking one unit now. Let you hear the motor rev up since you didn't get to hear that. Yep, so you have 3.3 .3 ounces on the second or the individual unit, the A unit and uh, combined of over 6.7 which is what I expected um, and obviously just the math but what I didn't expect was these little F units very very short being able to pull so much because I heard a rule of thumb is every ounce is about 15 normal sized freight cars so that with that math you're looking at this thing pulling over 50 freight cars by itself in the HO scale you know that's pretty good NMRA gauge check for the units A and B dead on for the rear and dead on for the front definitely did their homework there and another thing that we're going to check is the NMRA wheel gauge and spec engage 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 so sorry I'm trying to show you guys as I check myself but yes these are all four engage we didn't get to talk about multiple road numbers and schemes um, but there are different road numbers of this F7 a F7B through Intermountain. I will put the website below uh, so you can see all the different schemes there. But also you've got like horn dif differences, um, lift ring differences. Obviously there's going to be difference differences in road number, road name, detail, and Intermountain does that pretty well. You've got Union Pacific here. The white fuzzy is just a uh, styrofoam, but. Um, a little prone to Union Pacific, but it was good to have this unit out to see if there's some differences or problems with the units, especially those metal grills along the side. And again, once again, perfect metal grills. So uh, it's always nice to have multiple road names and road numbers to show you, but also to see if there's any problems as you run across multiple road numbers. Like, hey, I noticed, you know, there's two of these that have a problem or if it's just a fluke with something in this case there's no problem with the models at all um, in terms of broken parts or anything just that pesky styrofoam that you got to get out occasionally 
But yeah, there's the B unit of that. And since we kind of did a run by with Kansas City Southern when we did the speed testing at slow speeds, I'll do the final run by with this UP set. All right, we're at the scales here. We're gonna weigh the A unit, starting off in grams, 450 grams, 0 0.450 kilograms, 0.99 pounds, so we're just short of a pound, which is crazy for a small half unit like this, 15.9 ounces. So, let's add the B unit. You can do the math yourself if you want, if you just want the B unit, but the pair, which is most likely what you're gonna run, 895 grams, 0.895 kilograms, 1.97 pounds, one pound, 15.5 ounces, 31.5 total ounces. So very, very hefty, almost two pounds for the pair. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the review of the Intermountain F7A and F7B units with ESU select decoders inside. A very, very cool locomotives. As you can hear, they've got a shutdown sequence we didn't cover uh, where the spitter valves go off for a little while. Um, just that great ESU decoder uh, carries the product even more from a real nice foundation with great Intermountain detail and durability, uh, smooth runners. Um, so very, very nice locomotives and again, you can get really good prices out there. So um, I get some new viewers from time to time that get confused with MSRP and they're like, there's no way I can afford MSRP. So I'm trying to reiterate more that MSRP is not the norm or shouldn't be the norm for what you pay. Um, sometimes it comes to that at different dealers and, and hobby shops or if an item becomes rare, but in general, you're going to be able to find a discount in today's world on the internet and in hobby shops. But overall, a great model, great pair of models. Glad I could show you a couple different schemes. Since we showed you KCS, I'll leave you with a run by of UP with a short passenger train, a very short passenger train, um, but these things could pull a very long passenger train because the pull test was well was really good and the sound is good and just i can't say enough about these models so i'll leave you with a run by thanks for watching we'll see you next time right here on my channel take care